Um, just gonna look at samples of newsletters to see how businesses provide value to their readers and how these newsletters ask their audience to interact and engage with their content and business. Without further ado, Eva, thanks for joining us and the floor is yours. All right, great. Thank you for coming out today or actually for just sharing your lunch hour with me. And I'm gonna start sharing my screen here. Okay. So can everybody see the slides okay? Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Great. Um, so again, my name is Eva Barrows, and I am a freelance writer and editor. And the, one of my favorite projects is uh, helping clients have a very value-filled newsletter. And I uh, do that a couple of ways where I either help uh, write the content or I can kind of just do the whole process for clients and just working with them um, after I figure out what it is they want to talk about each month. Um, let's see. Okay. So the topic today is email newsletter basics to boost your business marketing strategy. And uh, we'll just kind of talk about newsletter basics. I kind of start out with marketing, um, you know, things you can do in newsletters that relate to marketing. And then we'll talk about what a newsletter looks like. I just kind of sample layouts and why those layouts work. Um, and then we'll have time for a question and answer later on. So this is just an example of what newsletters kind of have uh, looked like over time. So you can see the WhatsApp doc uh, newsletter on the bottom. Those are kind of traditional things like publications that would be like a printed publication. Um, you can, these are still available today and still done today, but it costs less if you make it a PDF. Um, and you can have the same kind of look um, through a PDF file and you can distribute that electronically. Um, and then there's programs like uh, Issue uh, where you can kind of look at it as if it was a magazine online. Um, but then the kind of newsletter that I'm going to talk about more is the streamlined email newsletter that you can create in programs like Constant Contact or MailChimp. And there's a bunch of different other email platforms that you can create newsletters like this. Um, and what they're really trying to do is optimize the layout for um, scrolling on your phone. So they really uh, reduce the amount of columns that you would see. You would not see a four column newsletter anymore if you're distributing it through email. Um, so just kind of who, like who would want to send a newsletter? So businesses obviously, be, and they would be doing this, they send the newsletter because they want to create a relationship with their customer and that will help them eventually sell products and services. And then entrepreneurs and small businesses, uh, the same thing. Um, they try to solve potential customer pain points with their content, and that will uh, create a loyal following. And then nonprofit organizations also send out newsletters um, as, all right, so I just wanna say that uh, nonprofits, they can help foster their community and, uh, su and gain support for what they do uh, through sending out newsletters. And that's the same kind of thing for activity groups, club groups. And then there are some publications that just distribute through newsletters and they can make money off of uh, sending out paid newsletters. Um, so why should businesses and brands send email newsletters? So one of the biggest benefits is having a direct line of communication with potential clients. Uh, so you can just send, an, send one email and that will go out to hundreds of people. So that's very powerful. Um, and then over time, when you're building your newsletter, it's gonna foster an engaged readership. So people will get to know your newsletter and know that they like to read it. And uh, they'll be excited for it to show up in their email. Um, 
businesses, so then businesses benefit because they become solution providers and sources of credible information for their readers. And they're consistently visible. So every month or every week, however often you decide to send an email, they're gonna, it's gonna consistently um, remind people of who you are and what your services are. So uh, how do email newsletters fit into a marketing strategy? So, con so the content that you generate for your newsletter can be repurposed as other types of marketing, such as you can put the uh, articles on your blog and on your website. Um, and the newsletters are also a vehicle for sharing other forms of content marketing. So if you're making videos, um, social media posts, you can work that into your newsletter. So just wanted to show real quick that uh, I created a you know, brand kit for myself, for my business. So I was able to put my colors, my brand colors into Constant Contact. And then it helps me kind of with my layout design. So I'm like, oh yes, I've used, you know, these are the colors that I'm gonna use to create that design. And then I had some professional photos taken. And so basically, you know, everything you're gonna do for your website you can um, use you know, all the branding information to create your newsletter template as well. Um, so the, now I'm gonna get into kind of how you can repurpose content and how you can um, pull um, you know, other marketing sources into your newsletter. So this one is an example of a longish article so I like to start off newsletters with something like this. Um, so you use about 200 words to introduce your article. Um, but you know, if you're writing something really long, you're usually, usually there's gonna be a link to read the rest of the article somewhere else on the web, um, just because you wanna keep people's attention. So the first sample here, the newsletter intro, it's kind of, it could be, you know, the first two paragraphs of your article, or it could just kind of be an introduction to your article. And then you would have readers click more and it goes over to your website for the full article. And then I've also working with someone where they don't have a blog set up, but they do have their LinkedIn. So you can, you know, post it as a LinkedIn article if you don't have a blog set up. And then this is just an example of, I shared a link to one of my writing samples in my newsletter and constant contact created this um, white uh, area with the uh, picture, the title and the blurb and the read more. And they, they populated that just off of a link to the article. So that's just kind of one of the features that it has. Um, and then so for social media, I like to, um, create a graphic that's um, kind of teasing my upcoming newsletter. So uh, I have like a little slideshow and I ask people, well, where on the peninsula is this? Or where in San Francisco is this? And then I say, you know, you can find out in my newsletter and here's the link to sign up for my newsletter. And then after I send out the newsletter, I then um, kind of send out another teaser and I'm like, and I say, you can find out you know, where this is if you look at the newsletter and here's the link to the newsletter. So you can get people to first sign up for it. And then after you've released the newsletter, have them look at that for the answer, whatever it is your trivia question might be. Um, and then this is an example um, of ways to share other forms of marketing. So. MailChimp and Constant Contact, and I'm sure other types of uh, email platforms, they can uh, support PDF files, Word doc files, Excel, Excel spreadsheets, and PowerPoint files. So just as if you were uploading an image to put in your newsletter, you can upload a PDF. And then um, this, this uh, kind of dark blue sample over here, this is a chunk from a newsletter where 
I have the PDF loaded into the MailChimp account. And then the people, you know, the readers would just click on the image or they click on the download guide. And then this uh, PDF would open up for them to look at. And then other types of marketing you can share, you can definitely share videos, infographics uh, as an image, uh, case studies, uh, podcasts. So this is a sample of right here is a video. So if you click on this, it'll take you over to the YouTube page to look at the video. And then this is an advertisement for a podcast. So then you would click to uh, listen to that podcast. And then I'm just gonna kind of talk about just newsletters specifically, like how you would get someone to open your newsletter. Um, you want to entice readers with your opening headline. Um, so I just have some samples here of some real headlines that kind of you know interested me. Um, so just kind of having a question, posing a question in your headline, uncomfortable on camera. So people have been, hmm, yeah, I am uncomfortable on camera. Let me look and see what this person has to tell me. And then I really was floored when I got this one from a friend. It says, time to get engaged. And I'm like, huh? And I thought you were married. <laughs> and then I just found out that, you know, it's time to uh, get employees engaged in, you know, because she's a, uh, like a career coach. Um, and then there's a, a topic the problem of a tip, the problem of a Tiffany lamp. And so it's kind of introducing some mystery. And then there's like plays on words where you get public art as resistance, walk the walk. Um, and then there's non-desperate, non-slimy writer networking. And so that's kind of, for me, it's like, yeah, I want to be able to network and not feel weird about it. So I'm going to open that up and see what those that advice would be. So there's just, you just wanna be a little bit provocative, a little bit to get people interested in opening your email. And then once you, uh, you can, this is a good example of coordinating your uh, fun um, headline with something fun in the beginning of your newsletter. So the headline is want to hear a pizza joke and then never mind, it's too cheesy. And then this graphic moved where you could see the person pulling out the pizza. So it was a kind of visual and a joke and it really kind of pulls you in to wanting to look at the rest of the content. And then just some ideas of opening with some fun is uh, have a quiz, a question, a funny joke, a quote. So sometimes you can quote from the content that you're, you know, the longer content that you have in the newsletter. Um, and then you have answers to any of these things at the end of your newsletter. So people will have to look at the whole thing to get the answer. Um, and then here, some examples of gifts. So I don't, I don't see too many newsletters where people are using gifts, but I think it's picking up a little bit in popularity because you can create like this one here in um, Canva. So Canva is getting you know, more popular, so you can kind of play with that. Um, and I just really like that this logo has this swimming fish. <laughs> um, I didn't know that, that, that it was moving. And I'm like, hey, is that moving? And I'm like, yes, yes it is. Um, so you can just play with that. Um, so as for article content, you uh, just, I just, my thing is I would just love every article to stay on topic, um, just has something to do with your business, something to do with your organization, something that you can offer. Um, and then of course, to be concise. Um, and then I like to have a mix of lo one long article with a few short blurbs toward, you know, at the bottom. Um, and I want to make sure that share with uh, value with readers at the top of the newsletter. Um, start with information they are curious about uh, or a learning opportunity. And then you can share products and services in conjunction with solving reader problems or uh, after they are given something of value. So basically, 
Um, I've seen newsletters where they're, they're called newsletters, but they are more like a catalog. So it's like a catalog of uh, products. And so it doesn't, it didn't really pull me in as a reader. Um, but, you know, because I'm subscribed to it, must, I'm probably interested in what they have to sell, but I just consider it to be a catalog more than a newsletter. And then this is, getting, we're getting into the uh, examples of kind of what newsletters look like. And then I thought this was a good example of kind of a large company. Um, they sell menswear, but it doesn't start off automatically like there's a, like, a, you know, it's kind of, they're giving us a little bit of information. And so they're talking about a trend uh, where people are going back to work and they have to figure out what they're going to wear to the office. And so the topic nicely dovetails with the company's products. Um, and then they actually, they come across as, you know, being genuinely helpful for readers with their uh, information. And so this is the next part of their newsletter. So they talk to an employee. Um, and so the company's apparel designer talks about what he likes to wear. Um, and then there's an idea of a coordinated look that uh, readers could put together. Um, so readers could actually buy these, uh, they could actually buy these items or they could see if they could replicate that from what they already have. Um, and then towards the end of this newsletter, there's um, uh, curated links uh, to other places on the web. So they uh, you know, share things like podcasts, websites, and videos that they think their readers might be interested in. Um, and then, so basically a reader kind of is rewarded for you know, looking at the products and they get to see things that they're interested in as well. And then this is an example of a larger like nonprofits newsletter. So just kind of looking at the anatomy of it, I, I like to have that uh, view in browser at the top. Um, just because so when you click that, it'll bring the newsletter up in its own browser. So that way it won't get cut off at the end. Because I know um, Google likes to cut the end of an email off. So this way you don't have to start all over. You just start, you know, looking at it in the browser from the beginning. Um, and then I, you know, enjoy this graphic that they have. It tells you, you know, what this organization is about. It's about the open spaces and the animals. And then it's a summer 2023. So they're a quarterly newsletter. And then they kind of tell you an introduction to like what they're going to talk about. And then they get right into, you know, whatever their most pressing topic is. Um, and this is the same newsletter continued. So some of the other things that they have in here are a photo contest. They definitely have a lot of education, uh, wildlife updates, project updates. Um, they talk about a new preserve, storm damage staffing updates and events that the public can take part in. So these topics are in line with what uh, their readers are expecting. And let's see if I had one more. Oh. I think I was gonna say that this one, um, if you were to print this, it would be like a 12 page, uh, 12 pages of printed pages. So it's pretty long, but it's only, it's a quarterly, so they, you know, come out less frequently and people kind of expect to learn, you know, a lot from their newsletters. So this is um, an example of an entrepreneur or small business newsletter. So it's from a uh, author and memoir writing coach. Her name is Darlene Frank. And this kind of just looks like a regular email. Um, it's a simple layout. It has lots of white space. And it looks like it's coming from a friend, which it is, but she uh, personalizes it with my name. Um, and then, so she shared a touching personal story about her experience of the holidays. And then she gives a writing prompt and that segues into a call to action to email her to learn how she helps writers. 
um, and it has her professional photo. So you can tell, you know, that because she's asking you to write for her, you know, send her an email and ask her for more information, that means it's not truly just an email, it, it, it is a newsletter. And then uh, Dennis is gonna talk about his newsletter for a little bit. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna spend just a couple minutes talking about my own experience with newsletters some of the lessons I learned in uh, writing a newsletter and some of the benefits that it has, um, has provided me. So my newsletter is called Content Corner. Um, it should be uh, Google optimized. So if you search for Content Corner newsletter, it should pop up a place where you can um, subscribe to it. Um, the history of the newsletter is very much tied to this meetup. So we've been running this meetup since 2015. So I guess we'll celebrate our eighth year this year. And uh, I think most of you came into this Zoom as a result of being a member on meetup.com. Um, but there's this concept of owned land versus rented land. Meetup.com is rented land in the sense that all of you are members of our meetup group. But meet, and so as one of the organizers, um, or as one of the organizers, I don't get access to your email addresses on meetup. So you might occasionally see You'll see like a new meetup, new meetup announcement from Meetup. You will also see, thanks, Rich. You'll also see um, occasionally I will message the group using the Meetup platform. So you'll get like an email from me through Meetup. But of course, I don't have your email addresses on Meetup. So um, one of the reasons um, like Meetup smartly controls that because if I had all of your email addresses on Meetup, I technically could just move the group somewhere else. So Meetup intentionally does not give me direct access to you. I have to go through their platform. But so as a result, that's called rented land in that I am renting a service from Meetup and like kind of renting your attention by way of Meetup. Owned land is something where you directly control. So an email list or an email newsletter is owned land because you have direct access to those email addresses. So one of the reasons I started Content Corner, I think it was 2016 or so, was so I can build an email list of people in our meetup group so that outside of meetup.com, I can message you and say, by the way, here's our next meetup. So that was actually the how this whole thing started, my journey into newsletters. I also thought of it, it actually became something much bigger. So um, beyond just something that I can promote meetup events to, I started to put together um, the format. So I use, I use a play on the word corner a lot. So all the different sections of the content corner has the word corner. So you see around the corner, Twitter corner, et cetera. And I started to begin, so I'm a big proponent of personal branding and I built a personal brand and continue to uh, manage a personal brand by being active on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, although not as much lately getting published online, et cetera. So an email newsletter was kind of an additional vehicle for me to build my personal brand. And I launched a newsletter around the time I actually was laid off from a full-time job. And then I went into um, freelance and marketing consulting, which I continue to do today. And the email newsletter has helped me continue building the personal brand and even um, expose people to my writing via email. So there is one case where uh, a potential client happened to be a subscriber to my newsletter and was thinking about hiring me to write a series, like a, an ongoing engagement for um, writing articles. And she had made the comment to me, I'm a subscriber of your newsletter, so I kind of know your writing style. So in a sense, the having the newsletter helped me land one of my early clients. Um, just a few more notes. One of my original, so uh, Eva was talking about curated links. My original mission around the newsletter was let me find really interesting articles that I can share with fellow marketers. And again, I, uh, I probably should have mentioned this newsletter is targeted towards marketers. And I got to the point where I started to realize like if I was listing eight links in my newsletter, sometimes there would be the um, paralysis, I forgot the term, but like you have too many choices. Like I'm not gonna click on any of these links because you're giving me eight choices so I reframe my approach and I, I include a lot less curated content today. And of course, everyone's, uh, 
This is a decision that each newsletter writer can make for themselves, but I decided I'm gonna curate less and I'm gonna share original perspective more. So the intro to my newsletter is a pretty long, um, essentially a mini article. Sometimes it goes even longer, in which case it's almost like a full-blown article. But my goal there is to share a unique perspective that I'm not publishing anywhere else. So it's not like I'm taking a blog post and putting it in my newsletter. It's always in the newsletter first. And what I found happened is if you think of the concept of exercising different muscles, um, as a marketing consultant, I've had plenty of workouts with uh, writing articles, with writing social media posts, but I never really exercised the muscle of email writing. And I've now gotten to the point where some clients want to do some, there's actually some, been some clients that want to do a newsletter. Um, and I said, I, I can help with that <laughs> because I have so much experience writing, writing my own. So it's really been a great benefit to my personal brand, but also to my business. Um, and because I've had so much experience publishing blog posts, um, one of the unique things I find is that in the past, I might publish a blog post and who knows whether it will be seen. Like I can share it on social media, share it with my friends. Some do really well, some like just fall flat. With a newsletter, I can sometimes, instead of writing a, a new blog post, I can put all of that content, unique perspective in my newsletter. And I pretty much know, I have a couple of hundred subscribers. It's not a huge following, but let's say if I have a 50% open rate, I at least know that hundred people are gonna read my unique perspective, which in a blog post, you know, I never knew if I could be guaranteed that. Um, finally, I, I thought I'd share one tip, which is, so this concept of, this concept of owned land versus rented land, uh, the, the email list is great. But one thing I tried recently is I took the Content Corner newsletter and I created a LinkedIn newsletter. The way you do that is you have to enable a creator mode on LinkedIn. And then when you publish an article on LinkedIn, you can publish it to your newsletter. And LinkedIn, originally I was kind of, it was a pet peeve of mine because LinkedIn really promotes connections newsletter a lot to, to you, to like, it promotes to me everyone that I'm connected to their newsletter. Um, and I thought that was overdoing it. But in but what happened to me is when I created this newsletter on LinkedIn, I got about 100 to 200 subscribers in the first few hours. I was like, wow. And now it's probably close to six or 700. And most of these are my first degree connections, but some of second and third degree are also finding it. And it was just amazing because people I worked with 20 years ago that I hadn't heard from in ages started subscribing on LinkedIn. So it was pretty cool. Um, I would I would always recommend keep uh, your focused attention on your own land, which is your email list, but you can try things like mm -hmm. essentially um, syndicating to other places like LinkedIn. Sorry, I'm going a little long. Final note is that um, I'll share three newsletters that I love. Um, Axios AM, it's a news-based newsletter that comes out seven days a week in the morning. So it gives me a little bit of what's happening in the world. For marketing, Ann Hanley's Total Anarchy, it comes out every other Sunday, and you get really to get to know Ann um, really well because she shares a lot in her newsletter. And then the last one, a local one for the Bay Area, there's a site called The 650. 650 is an, 650 is an area code here in the peninsula, and they share a lot of um, restaurants and other businesses in the Bay Area. So thank you, Eva. Eva, back to you. Thank you. Okay. And then just real quickly, um, you want to have calls to action in your newsletter. Um, and then just samples of that would just be asking, just anytime you're asking people to do something, like email me, read more, learn more, book a call, sign up here, buy now. So you can see there's this, uh, you can use a link, um, a live link to um, send people somewhere to do something, or you can create a button in these uh, newsletter programs. Um, and then that's just one way to find out if your marketing efforts are working, if people are clicking. And let's see, so just a kind of just a graphic thing that I have uh, enjoyed when I'm looking at other people's newsletters. This is Weekend Sherpa. So it's kind of uh, local travel articles. 
So if you're interested in something to do on the water, you would click here and it would take you to some articles about you know, what you can do on the water. Um, and then same thing with Campgrounds of America. If you wanna camp in a certain part of the country, you can just click on that and then they have a directory. So I just like this visual directory link. Oh, and it's usually towards the bottom of a newsletter. And then at the end of a newsletter, you would have your footer. So you're probably used to seeing things like this with the social media handles, um, but you could also you know, make it even more special by adding your Instagram feed or just have a really nice uh, layout. Um, this is an artist who is showing off her portfolio, plus you know, her image, her social links, and then a QR code. And then, so after you've sent your newsletter, you can get your uh, newsletter results. Uh, if you're using a program like Constant Contact, this is a sample from you know, what I work with. Um, so I sent out uh, uh, 175 emails and then 59% uh, were opened. Um, and then you can see that of the ones that were opened, 97% were looked at on a desktop and just 3% on a cell phone. Hmm. Um, so then that can kind of you can use that to guide your layout design. So you might not want to uh, design for phones. You can design more for desktops if that's how your open rate looks. Um, and then this is, so you can do multi-column layouts, uh, but they're best looked at on, a, uh, uh, on your desktop. So the program, so this is in constant contact. Um, there's a preview, you can see what your layout would look like on a phone. So they take that two columns and they turn it into one column for your phone. And then, so just the benefits of a newsletter email program. So just, you can use uh, your regular email to create a newsletter, but you would have to track your own uh, subscribers if they wanna add themselves, if they wanna get off your newsletter. Um, and then also it might be a little difficult to do the layout and then it might not be uh, mobile friendly. So that's why I would suggest, you know, trying something like a MailChimp or Constant Contact. Um, and then, so what are some ways, if you're just starting out your newsletter, how can you get subscribers? So you can email your current contacts that you think might be interested and just let them know that you've uh, started a newsletter and then give them the link to sign up. Um, and you can announce your newsletter on social media and of course include the link. Um, and then you can add up, you can put a sign up form on your website and then also a pop-up form. So sometimes people don't like pop-up forms, but that is a good way to collect uh, addresses. Um, and then also if you're gonna be doing any networking events or workshops, you can ask people to sign up when you're uh, presenting. And then this is just a sample of a sign up form. So this is a pop up. And then also you can do an inline form on your website. So it's usually at the bottom of your website, or if you have a column, you put it on the side. Um, and then landing pages, you can create a, a landing page in your constant contact. Um, and then just share that link with people. And then that's how you would share it on social media and get people to sign up. And then like, when should you send a newsletter and how often? So you wanna send your newsletter at the same time of week and month, uh, just it kind of sets a professional tone uh, just to kind of be consistent. And then if you are promoting a special event, you can plan a series of newsletters leading up to the, to the event. So you can have like a special, maybe if you're only usually doing your newsletter once a month, but something special is coming up, you could do it once a week and then just go back to the normal frequency after the event. Mm. Um, so, and then some people, some businesses like to send a newsletter once a week, but that, that could be a big time commitment. Just think if you can, you know, keep that, keep that momentum up or not. Um, and so this is towards the end of the end of the presentation. So I just wanted to let you know that I do a newsletter jumpstart coaching call. So if you're uh, planning on starting a newsletter or if you want to redo the one that you have now, 
I offer coaching for that, a one hour Zoom call. And we just kind of talk about your specific needs to get that going. So you can go to my website, evabarrows.com and it's listed under services or right here is the full length to that. Um, so I think we can stop here for question and answer if there's any questions. Let's see. That was great. Very helpful. Thank you. Jason? Jason, go ahead. Hey, thank you for all of this really helpful and insightful information. Um, so this current uh, newsletter that I'm running has over a thousand subscribers. It has a 56% email open rate and I'm constantly getting new subscribers, but um, the new subscribers essentially sign up through my website and it doesn't integrate with constant contact. Um, the platform uses, integrates with MailChimp. And I was just, so like I'm having to manually wow. take over and enter them into constant contact. And I haven't been able to find an integration that doesn't involve coding or switching over to MailChimp. And I was just wondering if anyone has, um, had this issue or has built a site on now I apparently constant contact offers like a CMS service where you can build a site. Um, so I'm like considering like building the site on constant contact to eliminate this manual process. Um, and I was just wondering if you guys had any thoughts of that, if you've Good ever question. experienced that issue. I mean, I haven't because I have the, um, my sign up form coordinates with uh, constant contact is which, and that's what I use. <laughs> so and, and now is your form on your, on your site? What CMS do you use? Um, so I'm using, oh, it's called like, it's like MA web centers okay, and then so they're able to, I'm able to put the constant contacts, uh, app code snippet. <laughs> and then I, okay. So, and it works. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Jason, um, I was going to ask you, what CMS are you using for your site? Um, it's a platform called Strikingly, and they have like really great, um, super usable, uh, like great usability um, in terms of building out a really nice site. Um, the site is alamosquare.org. Um, and it really um, helps with uh, blog posts and being able to accept payments and subscriptions and their one weakness because they do have a newsletter function is that their newsletter capability is nowhere close to as slick and nice as constant contact or MailChimp. Um, so now I've like created essentially created these two silos <laughs> and it's really makes the data transfer just difficult and sort of time consuming. Yeah, the the only thing that I can recommend is you, I think Constant Contact allows you to build a landing page in Constant Contact, so you can so maybe just I mean it's not it might be better just to send people from the place on your site that you're promoting it to that page as opposed to going into Mailchimp and then and then copying over to Constant Contact. Yeah, like you always want to go to your source as direct as you can. Your source being Constant Contact, right? Okay, thank you. Sure. Other questions? Oh yes, and Elizabeth just chimed in. Yeah, Zapier is a great service that allows you to like have different services talk to each other. So that they might be able to look check out Zapier. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Sure. Other questions from folks? I have a question. Um, and, and sorry, I joined late. This is Courtney. So I don't know if you already covered this, but, um, we have a newsletter that we were sending to prospects. So a B2B newsletter sent out of HubSpot. And, um, we wanted to re-leverage and kind of reuse the content for different audiences, meaning customers and partners. And I wondered if anyone had any good tips for that. Um, for example, one time, I think um, at a company I worked for, we took the prospect newsletter and then added kind of a special customized message at the top of it that made it, you know, more partner focused. 
but then the content was still kind of prospect focused. So um, I don't know how, how folks have found maybe an easy way to reuse content in newsletters for multiple audiences, like different audiences so that they get exactly what they want. So Courtney, you are you thinking about rewriting the content, like the same topic, but rewriting it for the different audience? Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe you've launched a new product and, you know, you want your prospects to know about it, but then you want customers to know more of like the nitty gritty. Uh, but then that becomes kind of a lot of work of rewriting the same content over and over for different audiences, but that might be the best approach. Well, if you're talking about like whatever the product is, like would that already be on the website? Cause you could just direct, you know, if you want more information about this product, go to the website. Mm, that's true it could be kind of a basic newsletter content but then send people to whatever the resource is to get more detail that's relevant to their who they are yeah that's think, a good idea and Courtney I think one answer is seg segmentation so you could segment customers prospects all different types segments and you would email them so that they get you might have to make small tweaks but so that a prospect gets something that's relevant to the prospect which is different, a different context than a customer. Yeah, exactly. So I think I, I still have to tweak it all every time. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's, it's some amount of work, but I think it results in better satisfaction to the recipient when it's more, anything that's more tailored to you is better than repurposed or generic or not relevant. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Also, um, I had a tip from something my husband does. He owns a very, very small business, you know, just five employees. And he um, publishes a lot on his blog. They're pretty short blogs. They're always, they have beautiful photos because it's all water sports. And um, he, his newsletter is literally just a digest of like the three latest blogs. So he doesn't curate anything at all. He just takes the blogs and they just get popped into a newsletter and it's all automatically sent weekly. And um, I thought that was pretty cool because he, he, you know, it's all automated and he doesn't have to actually custom create anything. Does he have a good success with it? Like open rate? Yeah, he does. So it's, you know, a digest, but I think it's because it has great photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going to the people who want to look at it. <laughs> they want yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually have a question, please. Um, I'm an astrologer and I have a newsletter, like I'll be doing a summer solstice newsletter in about a week. And I use the PDF form format for it. I don't use MailChimp or constant comment. Can you please let me know what you think of that? Because it ends up being kind of long, like six or seven pages. And I'm sure people don't scroll through all of it. Well. Are you having good success with it? Are people reading it? You know, that's a good question. I think some loyal customers do read it, um, but I'm not, I could probably have more success with it. Put it that way. I'm a Virgo. I have pretty high standards, so um, it could be better, but I kind of use the same PDF. And that's fine. I mean, as long as people are able to follow the link and, and open it and read it. That works. And Courtney, I'm not sure if you. No, that's you know. good. I, I always, you know, think it'll think it's kind of kind of old school to have it like that. But control over the layout, maybe that way. So that's a plus. Oh, OK. Yeah, I kind of have a big list. So, um, oh, and you can track your opens with MailChimp. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess I sort of go old school and I just have the same PDF and, you know, sometimes I get a little lazy and I just update it for, oh, Mercury's retrograde, you know, this year, these are the dates. I kind of almost use the same format year to year. But I see, you know, like my colleagues and, you know, they got the MailChimp and the um, constant comment and it, it just seems a little more um, updated. Yeah, and then you can try MailChimp for free, so you can give it a try. Okay, and I'll check out your website too, Eva. Oh, great, great, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Do you have a preference of MailChimp or Constant Comment? 
I like constant contact. Um, constant. Yeah. Okay. We have time for one more question. Anyone have one? I'll note, Courtney, that uh, there's a nice comment from Elizabeth in the chat for you about dynamic content in MailChimp. I'm not sure if you're using MailChimp or if you mentioned that. But you know, I, I didn't see the comment and I was thinking about dynamic content and whether people were really using that effectively. Elizabeth, are you a user of dynamic content? I do use it for a couple of my clients, yeah. Um, it does take thought beforehand because you do need really to segment, um, you know, your audience as appropriate. Um, but once that's done, it's pretty easy to do. So you just, you know, if, um, you know, if if client is in group customer, then they see, you know, this block. If and then you have another one that says, you know, if they're in this this, you know, this category, then they see a different one. Um, I've also used it for um, actually for my own email for for local people. Like if I'm having a local um, in person event, I'll show it to them, but I won't necessarily show it to the people that you know live in Illinois or something because pretty sure mm -hmm. they're not coming all the way out here for in person <laughs> event. <with me>. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I wondered about dynamic content because I don't really think we're using it correctly or efficiently <laughs> or effectively. So. Um, that's a great point. Yeah, you just, um, excuse me, I swallowed wrong. Yeah, you just have to think about your um, your list and you know how you track people on it. <coughs> but you can also, um, I'm, I'm sure other platforms, I'm, I'm more familiar with MailChimp, but I'm sure other platforms do this too. You can have people self-select what group they wanna be in. Um, example of that is, I mean, let's say you're a clothing line. Um, you know, for me personally, I probably only care about women's clothing. I don't, and I definitely don't care about kids' clothing, and I really don't necessarily care about men's clothing either. So you can let me choose, and I'll only see emails about women's clothing. Um, that's one way to go. Just depends on how you need to segment people. All right, and with that, we're going to wrap things up for today. Eva, Eva thanks so much. What capabilities they offer. Oh. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Eva. So visit evabarrows.com if you want to learn more about Eva's business or how she can help you. And stay tuned for more meetups. We have two more scheduled this summer. There might be, there might be more to come. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.